good evening. Please join us in singing our gathering hymn on Jordan's Bank, page 41. Page 41. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. 
Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because 
of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will pre prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. person was in prayer with God and was puzzling over this thing that Peter says in uh, that we heard in the second reading today that to God a thousand years are like a day and he asked God what that was what that was like what 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 is it what is it about this time for you he tried to understand this and so he, um, God responds to him and says, well, you know, a thousand years, it's not really like a day, it's just like a minute passing by. So then the mass asks him, Lord, what is a million dollars to you? <laughs> okay, you already know the story, I guess. I'll finish it anyway. And he says, oh, it's only a penny. So the person says, God, can I have one of your pennies? 
And he says, God responds with, well, just wait a minute. <laughs> it's hard for us really, though, to understand God, to understand the eternity of God and what eternity must be like. People, theologians have described it as the eternal moment. God always lives in the moment, but that moment encompasses all time. It doesn't make sense to us. How can that possibly be? How can we make sense of all of this? The other thing I think that's more, that's more puzzling for us is why God waits so long, has waited so long, to return. Why is he waiting? What's up with this delay? Why doesn't he come back right away? We see so many horrible things in our world and we say, God, return. Jesus, return and stop all of this. That's part of what the Advent season is about. It's really about the two comings of Christ. We uh, focus more on his coming in glory at the end of time, at the beginning part of Advent, but then as we get closer to Christmas, the focus turns more to his birth for us. But we want him to return, and that's what Advent is about, wanting Jesus to come and hoping that through our prayer we accelerate that coming. But I think for God it's different. It's different. God is not just delaying, he is patient with us. He is waiting. He wants everyone to accept salvation. He wants everyone in heaven. And so he's waiting for people to change, for people to turn back to him, for people to discover him new. He's just waiting and waiting. And for us, it's difficult. It's difficult to wait. It's hard to just wait and wait and wait for something to happen. Maybe that's the hardest part about our prayer is that we want God to answer right away. We don't wanna to have to wait for an answer. And this wise person once told me that there were three answers to prayers. Yes, no, and not yet. And that's the hard one, the not yet. How do we wait? How do we be patient? Well, we should be happy that the Lord is patient with us and with everyone, giving us this time to be ready for his coming to refine us more and more and more, to give us the season of Advent so that we might examine ourselves, see the sins we need to confess, make use of the penance service that will happen at St. Barnabas, it will be in the bulletin that's coming up, but also to confessions available here on Saturdays at four, and then of course I'm always available by appointment. We must repent if we are to accept salvation. And that repentance is literally a turning around. It's turning away from sin and towards God. We all did that at baptism when original sin was wiped away. And I like to think of original sin in terms of the fact that we are born with our backs towards God. And the repentance that we receive from the removal of original sin turns us around. And now we can spend our entire life moving towards God rather than away. Though there are times when we stray, when we go on some other path that does not lead us to God. There are those times. But repentance, that's difficult, that's difficult. And I think about what is required for the confession of our, our sins, for the um, uh, to receive that forgiveness. What, what is required there? And there are steps for this. It's all been mapped out for us. I mean, the first thing that we have to do is confess our sins. Then we, ha we have to be able to speak them. We can't keep them hidden within us. They have to be made known. Now, God, of course, forgives through our prayer, 
But the sacrament of confession is a wonderful opportunity to be, to unburden yourself of your sins and to hear those words of absolution, to hear those words that God has forgiven your sins. It makes it a sure thing. It makes us something that we have no doubts about after we leave the confessional. We know that God has forgiven us. Okay, so we have to confess those sins. We have to express our sorrow for them. We are not merely saying them, but we know that we, we express this sorrow because we know that our sins have hurt others, perhaps hurt ourselves, but they hurt God. And that maybe is a hard thing for us to remember or a hard thing for us to imagine because we always think of God as all powerful and all knowing. And so how can he be hurt if he's all powerful? Well, he is hurt because he loves and love is a, is, opens us to the vulnerability of being hurt. We open ourselves to others in love, recognizing that that love may not be returned or that love may be betrayed through sin. God willingly does this, loves us, and is hurt by our sins, but never lets that hurt keep him from loving us. He will always love us, always, even though he is hurt. So we have to express that sorrow for the hurt that we've caused through our sins. We have to be willing to do that. And then the, the last part, I think, which is probably the hardest for us to admit, and we pray it in the act of contrition, that we want to do better with God's help. We have that desire what the church calls the firm purpose of amendment. We want to do better. Are we always going to succeed? Maybe not. I suppose we look at our own consciences or we look at maybe repetitive sins in our lives and we see something that might bring us to discouragement. We make that purpose of amendment and yet we do not change. But God is patient with us. God is waiting for that change and he is always willing to provide us whatever we need to make that change. That part is not lacking. It's us who are lacking in our openness to accept that gracious help. To say, okay, Lord, I can't stop doing this sin myself, but I know that you can help me to stop. So we have to accept that help. Again, perhaps God is disappointed in us, but he never stops loving us. He always loves us, always, never stops. No matter how badly he's been hurt, doesn't matter, doesn't matter with him. Though he experiences it, still loves us. I think God's patience also tells us that we should never give up. We should never just say, oh, I'm just never gonna be able to do this thing. I'm never gonna be able to stop sinning. I'm never gonna be able to do any of that. And you, we give up. And that's where Satan gets very happy. He says, I've won over another one now. That's not what we want. We want to keep trying with God's help. And remember, God is so patient, he will wait. He will wait for us to turn to him. He will wait for us to confess our sins and express our sorrow and our desire to do better with his help. And he will come and he will provide. The giving up, giving up reminds me, reminds me of an expression that I saw once and please excuse the fact that this was a piece of graffiti. But I still think it had some wisdom in it. And sometimes graffiti has that. Think about fish that swim upstream and how difficult that can be. But that it's necessary for them to spawn. It's necessary for them to continue the race. 
It's hard work, but it is done and it gives life and perpetuates life. So now on to the graffiti. Only dead fish go with the flow. <laughs> so for now, let's just thank the Lord for his patience with us. Let's not grow impatient with ourselves and give up and just go with the flow. Instead, let's use this season in particular to ask the Lord to help us with those sins, to ask the Lord to help us to accept his gracious help. We receive that in the Eucharist every time we come to Mass. Jesus provides himself to us in the best expression of love there could be. We have no doubts that he loves us and that he wants to help us. Perhaps you might have a particular habitual sin in mind as you come forward for Eucharist and to ask the Lord to heal that, to ask the Lord to help you to give that sin up and to receive that Eucharist as you, after you say amen to it. Take in the gracious help of God, the patient help of God. Know that he is always with us and that he, he can help us to overcome any struggle we have in our lives. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, you give comfort and peace to your people. We come before you with the prayers of our hearts. For our Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests and deacons, that they will shepherd the church with wisdom and loving compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For civil servants and government officials, that they will provide uh, that to comfort those who seek assistance, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who dwell in residences of assisted living and extended care and for their caregivers, that they may provide, that they provide a nurturing environment of loving patience, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all expectant parents anxious for a new child or those who hold vigil with loved ones facing death, that they find peace after hope-filled waiting, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of our community, especially those who are unable to be with us, 
that we all may faithfully await new heavens and new earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and the Holy Land and in all areas of the world and that nations of the world will respond generously to the needs of those who are suffering because of war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, The Mass intention is in memory of Robert Ray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, God of goodness and grace, may we heed Isaiah's message and strive to prayerfully prepare the way of the Lord. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, The second collection today is for uh, religious retirement. Thank you for your generosity. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Page 655, Wade in the Water, if you join in with the in the refrain. Preaching by the shores of Jordan stream. Repent of your sins and let the water wash you clean. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Now wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Jesus came to be baptized by John, and when it was done, a voice from the heaven said, This is my beloved Son. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, now wait. Trouble the water. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name and all good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise 
in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus. 
has come. Wise and foolish still we wait, come Lord Jesus, is our bridegroom at the gate, Lord Jesus come. At his voice our hearts have stirred, listening for his healing word, confident our cries are heard, Lord Jesus come. Come to us, O living Lord, come Lord Jesus, come with justice like a sword, Lord Jesus come, come in wood and wine and bread, come again then for be fed, raise your servants from the dead, Lord Jesus come, Lord Jesus come. Our communion hymn, Down to the River, page 656. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection next weekend will benefit ABCCM and St. Vincent de Paul. The Little Blue Books are back, six-minute meditations for the Advent and Christmas season. Uh, they're available in the narthex, the, also, along with the 2024 parish calendars. The Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe will take place on Monday, December 11th. Please uh, join our Hispanic brothers and sisters in this celebration beginning at 6.30 p.m. 
All the women of St. Joan of Arc are invited to a Women's Day, Women's Day of Reflection on Saturday, uh, December 16th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please read this week's insert in the bulletin for more information and there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. The Finance Council has suggested that if you are required to make a minimum distribution from your IRA, please consider a qualified charitable distribution to St. Joan of Arc. Uh, remember, this is not included in your income. Uh, St. Joan of Arc is $1,600 short of our priest's retirement uh, goal for, the, for that collection. Uh, please help us to meet that goal. The parish office is looking for a volunteer who speaks fluent Spanish and English to assist with inquiries from our Hispanic community. Uh, contact the parish office if you're interested. Uh, a reminder, uh, it's cold and flu season and COVID is still out there. If you're sick, please stay home. God will understand. Uh, contact the parish office if you wish to receive flock notes or you can follow the instructions on the front of the bulletin. That's the main way that we tell people about last minute things like changes in schedule or closings due to inclement weather. Uh, Kathy Daly from Liturgy and Spiritual Life would like to speak to us. Please be seated. The season of Advent always gives us pause to take some time for reading and reflection with the little blue books. Spending this brief time each day helps us to be prepared for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I want to highlight another opportunity to enrich your Advent journey. Tomorrow, December 10th, the second Sunday of Advent, we will present Stations of the Crib, which is a reflection on the Christmas story. This is a participatory service including a reader, a reflective voice, song, and prayer. This is the third year we've had this service. Previous years, we've had a good turnout. I hope it can be even better this year. We need you to make this service complete, and you need us to make your Advent journey complete. Please mark your calendars for tomorrow if, you've, uh, uh, if you have not already done so for D December 10th at 3 p.m. Come join your St. Joan of Arc family as we celebrate the Advent season with Stations of the Crib. All are welcome. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, The King Shall Come, page 47. The King shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks, when beauty gilds the eastern hills and life to joy awakes. Not as a 